Once you have created an account, it will open on a page that looks very similar to this one. Let's begin by starting a project. Click on the yellow ball surrounded by the blue circle where it is titled Projects. Since you have no projects, if you have a new account, you will want to click on Create Project. You will want to name your title something memorable. I suggest you use perhaps the title of the course that you are preparing projects for. I have already created one entitled Calculus. After you have changed the project title, go ahead and click on Create Project. This will put you back into the section which lists all the files within that project. You can do both of your Python projects in the same project. If you want to create a new file, you can click on New and then choose from the different possibilities that you see in the list. We will always be using a Jupyter notebook, but you will be provided with the code to create this notebook, so you do not need to start one from scratch. If you do choose to create a new notebook, then you will also want to name it something memorable, such as Project 1. After naming the project, click on Create. It will ask you to select a kernel. You will select Python 3 system-wide. This will enable you to write the code from scratch or to generate code using artificial intelligence. In our system, however, you will be given the file in order to simplify the work you have to do. Click again on Explore to go back to the main page. We want to upload a file. You can locate the file within Windows Explorer or on your Mac computer. Notice that it has a .ipynb extension. This indicates that it is a Python Jupyter Notebook file. Within the CoCalc system, click on Upload. It will give you options and navigate to where you want to upload the file from. This is the file for a Calculus 3 course. Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3 do Python projects. Go ahead and click on the IPYNB file and it will upload it for you. To open the file, simply click on the name. It will open and you will see all of the cells within the file. In order to work within a Python Jupyter notebook, there are different cells. This cell is a text cell, as is this cell here, which explains how to get started. When you see a line that has IN and then a number in brackets, this represents an input cell. Some cells have output, which you will see below as OUT with square brackets and the same number associated. Some input lines, such as this one here, do not have any output. In order to get a line to execute, click anywhere within the line, hold down the shift key, and press enter. This will cause that line to execute. It will take a little while when you first get started for the kernel to begin. Once the kernel has begun, it will execute the line and you should see the output. It is very important in programming that you execute the cells in the order that they are written, since later cells may depend on information found in earlier cells. Notice that this starts with the number one, but this now says four. That lets me know that it has gone to sleep and woken back up in between. When that happens, the system no longer knows anything about the cells that were not recently executed. You will need to re-execute all of the code lines by holding shift and pressing enter. This is an input cell that has no output. 
notice that it has multiple lines of code in it. Any line that begins with a hashtag is a comment line, which is not read by the program. Likewise, any line that begins with three sets of quote marks and ends with three quote marks is also a comment line and does not appear in the program itself. This input cell has three lines of code. The matplot library inline, import numpy as np, import matplot library dot pyplot as plt. Every code requires some packages in order to run the code. In this case, NumPy is the numeric Python library. Matplotlib is the math plotting library available in Python. Once we have executed all the codes, we'll be able to see the output. You can also run all of the codes by clicking on run up above and running the current cell, selected cells, selected cells and be insert below, or you can run all the cells, or you can run the selected cell and all below. We're going to go ahead and run all of the cells so that we can see the output. It can be confusing if it goes to sleep and what was working suddenly no longer works. Look to the number next to the cell to see if it has gone to sleep. It will begin numbering again at one. Notice that the numbers are in order. This tells me that they were all executed at the same time and it used all the lines of code in the appropriate order. Let's suppose that we want to copy and paste what's in a particular line and put it into a different line of code. For example, when we're looking at this particular practice session here, you may want to copy some code and place it in the area below. If you copy code, you can simply highlight the code or use Control A or Command A for selecting all, and then use Control C to copy and Control V to paste. For all of your Python projects, you will be required to copy some of the code and adjust some of the code. There will be instructions in each Python project to tell you exactly which parts to change and exactly which input cells to copy. Once you have it, you can click in another box and you can push paste. Under the edit menu are several options. You can use Control Z or Command Z to undo what you've just done. You can also cut cells, copy cells, and paste cells. You can also insert cells though there is another easier way to insert a cell. It is not often the case that you will need to move cells. In fact, you should not need to move any of the cells. You may decide, however, that you want to clear all the output and simply start over. If you want to clear output and start over, you can click on clear output of selected cells or clear all output cells. If you clear all output cells, it will delete all of the output cells, and you will have to re-execute to see the output. There are also options as well under view, but I rarely ever need to adjust these. The last thing that you will probably want to do, of course, is to print your file. When we go to print the file, we click on file, and then we scroll down to where it says either save and export as PDF or save and export as HTML. I will warn you that it gets a little tricky getting it to print out correctly. I have had the best luck saving and exporting as HTML via the classic NB convert classic notebook convert. 
The Jupyter Lab Notebook Convert works as well, but unfortunately, it will cut off any longer lines of code so that your instructor cannot see the full code. I recommend that you use HTML via Classic NB Convert. If you click on this button, it will open up a pop-up menu and it will start exporting it to an HTML file. It will let you know as soon as that file is ready to be opened by presenting the name in a blue color, which becomes a link. You can then open the file by clicking on the link and you will see all of your lines of code presented in HTML. In order to get this to print, you need to hold down the control key and hit P or the command key and hit P on a Mac. Choose to save as a PDF or as an Adobe PDF, depending on what's available in your particular system. Make sure when you look through that if there is a long line of code that it is not simply truncating and cutting it off, but that it is wrapping it to the next line of text. This is the reason that I typically use the classic convert. When you click on save, it will give you the option to save it on your computer. Then you can upload the PDF of your work for your instructor to give you feedback. The CoCalc system will save not only your Python project, but it will also save the HTML code, as you see right here. You can click on this and open it in a new window if for some reason the PDF gets messed up. You can go back to the project by clicking on the project name. If you use the Jupyter Lab Notebook Convert, let's see what happens. In general, this one will produce the HTML code. It's just that when it saves the HTML code, it will not wrap the text from one line to another. In this case, notice that it may be cutting off lines of code. In this line, set the viewing window of the graph. In practice two, adjust X and Y limits to get, and it has cut off the code. It has also cut off the code in the line above it. I don't recommend that you save HTML using the Jupyter Notebook option. CoCalc will automatically save your file every so often. I don't often need to hit the save button, but it's not a bad idea to hit save frequently throughout if it ever turns into a darker green. That means that you have typed something and it has not yet been saved. Do be careful when you are typing into the system. If you do not use precisely the right code, it simply will not run. And it will give you an error message that is very long and probably very confusing to figure out. You can also find code on the internet that will help you to program in Python. You can simply Google Python and the name of the command you are trying to use to see what might have gone wrong. Also, when you are trying to proofread your code, I recommend that you go character by character to make sure that you have exactly the right symbol in the right place. Another thing that you will need to know about Python programming is that Python does not do implied multiplication. If you want to multiply, it must be explicitly typed using the asterisk symbol. Typing U2 does not multiply some variable named U by two. U2 is in fact a name. If you want to multiply, you must type the asterisk. It also does not use the caret symbol for powers. If you want to raise to a power, you use two asterisks in a row. It does recognize parentheses, so be sure to use parentheses often in order to make sure that you are entering what you think you are entering.
you will be able to print out your results on all of the ones that are required for grading by your instructor. Your instructor will come through and check your code to make sure it's correct. If you decide you want to add a line of code, simply hover in between two cells. You can insert a line of code or you can insert a line of text. This is the end of this video on how to work within a Jupyter Notebook and to program with Python.